What is going on, everybody? Stay here, France, and we're here for a Monday Night Raw review for November 16th, 2019. The Go Home Show to Survivor Series, where Raw gets invaded by both NXT and SmackDown for the first time. The show opened up with, with Becky Lynch. She addresses Raw Women's Champion, what SmackDown Women's Champion, and NXT Women's Champions, Jenna Baszler, about what's happening. She doesn't want to wait until Survivor Series. She wants to fight tonight. Wants both of them to come out and brawl tonight. Unfortunately, she gets the Moronics. Billy Kay and Point Peyton Royce. They heard Becky talk about Safari's hairs and couldn't stay quiet. They enter the ring as they can go out and they go on about being the future. Becky interrupts and said it's supposed to be she and Charlotte Flair attacking tonight, but a better future would be Becky versus them, the like, Mor- Moronics right now. And they agree we're ready for a fight, but out comes Charlotte Flair. She says that's fine if Becky wants to face them all by herself. She doesn't, I, I know you don't want to tag with me. I don't want to tag with you either. But the forces and powers that be want them together. And she's leading Team Raw in a 15-woman elimination Survivor Series match. He enters the ring and comes out. Then Samoa Joe's music hits and he marches out and he goes to commentary as he is dressed in a suit. He is replacing the O'Madden for the night as the O'Madden is still, for whatever reason, selling the F5. Why the O'Madden has to sell the F5 for a second week in a row is beyond me. This was an absolute squash match. I don't even know what was the point of this match. Iconics get beat in about two minutes with the figure eight. Not much else you can say there. After the match, Flair and Lynch head to the ramp as NXT Women's Champion Shannon Baszler, Jessamyn Duke, and Marina Shafir, the horsewomen, hit the ring to attack the Moronics and clear them out. Lynch and Flair run, I'm, I'm sorry. Lynch and Flair <coughs> Run back to the ring as a 2 on 3 brawl breaks out. The, four, the horsewomen take out Lynch and the uh, and doubled in Flair in the corner. The NXT superstars ex- ex- exit the ring through the crowd, but almost immediately, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, because of course, they did not sell this beatdown whatsoever. So they got beat down and immediately went after the Justin Duke, Marina Shafir, and Shayna Baszler, only to have security guards come out. And stop the fight from happening. Lynch drops one security guard with the right hand, and then we go to commercial break. So this was your first of many invasions on the night, and I'm I'm fine with them with the horsewomen coming out, but what I'm not fine with is the fact that you have Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair get beat down. I know it wasn't a big beat down, but they got beat down by these three women in a three on two mat, a three on two beat down. And they'll back up almost immediately like nothing happened. At least sell the attack. Like, don't get up immediately and run back at them. Get up slowly and actually sell as if you just got your ass kicked by three other women. Come the fuck on. Backstage, Charlie Caruso is with Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins to talk about tonight's tag team title shot against the Viking Raiders. I guess they won a tag team triple threat match or something over the weekend to get them a title match. That was supposed to happen on Monday Night Raw, but unfortunately, they're getting ready, and all of a sudden, the Alphas of Pain just get in their face, and they destroy Zack Ryder and Cart Hawkins, and I'm sitting here thinking, thank you. I was in my, When that match was announced for the tag team titles, I was fearing that we were going to see another title change with Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder beating the Raiders because... They, have, they aren't undefeated anymore, so if WWE wants to fucking um, have them beat, they can have them beat by some screw finish or something else. That did not happen, and the AOP saved us from that, so thank you, Jacob and Mazar. We go to the ring, and out comes um, um, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, and AJ Styles. AJ Styles is not happy that he has to put his title on the line next week against Humberto Carrillo, and he pretty much offers up when he offers up Carl Anderson to take on Humberto Silvio in a match for just, you know, a little bit of a warm-up so that Humberto Silvio won't be ready for next week. We back and forth match between these two. Uh, the Street Profits came out towards the middle of this match to make it a three-on-three. Three. You got a tope, I believe it was a tope con hilo, con hilo by uh, Humberto Silvio to all three members of the OC before we went to commercial break. We come back and they have. A, we get towards the end of the match. Carrillo gets rocked by a few, uh, rocked a few times out of the corner. He fights and looks to go to the top, but there's a chaos from both teams on the outside. After that, the OC tries to interfere as 
Gallows drops, uh, brings Humberto Carrillo's neck down onto the ropes. He bounces back. And um, Anderson looks to roll him up, but he's close enough to the ropes that Montez Ford, as AJ Styles is distracting the referee, can come and push and get the thing turned over so Humberto Carrillo gets the one, two, three, and Humberto Carrillo wins thanks to the help of the Street Profits. So yes, he's going to be facing AJ Styles next week because of what happened last week. I was honestly surprised it didn't happen this week, knowing how WWE likes to do things. But no, it will be next week. Caruso is backstage with Seth Rollins, which, by the way, before we get we get any further, after this, she says, "Well, I'm gonna hold on." Rollins goes about Andre giving him a praise for at one point and says he will be proven at one one more time by Monday Night Rollins as he burns it down later on. Caruso says right here, and this kind of got stupid for me. She, can't, she says, coming up, we have some big breaking news that you have to see to believe. We go to commercial break. This, when she said this, it was about 9.30, I believe, 9.45. We didn't get this big breaking news until right before the main event of the show. How is it big breaking news if you're not going to tell us what it is right away? No way Jose is out to do the job to Bobby Lashley, who has not had a match on Monday Night Raw in about four months. Bobby Lashley comes out with Lana. No Jose waits in the ring. Lana takes the mic, and honestly, unless she is being Rusev's valet who talks up, uh, talks him up, he needs to never talk on the fucking mic. She's absolutely awful. She says this is the happiest day of her life because she has filed for divorce from Rusev, and she also has some bad news. The Rusev Day chants get up. She says that he will, we will no longer see her, her soon-to-be ex-husband as she has gotten a restraining order against him in the state of Massachusetts. Which is in the state of Massachusetts. I'm pretty sure that restraining order will not be um, validated anywhere else. I could be wrong. Russo can't come within a certain number of miles from her, which is about 90 feet, she says. They just want Russo out of their lives forever so they can be together forever. Uh, first and foremost, we all know this is absolute bullshit. I mentioned this last week. There are people who were at the UK tapings that saw Rusev and Lana in the gym or something working out together as a happy couple would. We know the fucking restraining order is bullshit. We know the fucking divorce is bullshit. This entire fucking storyline is fucking bullshit. Nobody is buying it for a goddamn minute. Rusev Day chants begin as well as the battle rings. He goes right to work on who, um, so a couple moves here, a couple moves there. Um, no way Jose does get a couple licks in on um, Bobby Lashley until he puts him into the the Fool Nelson lock, which used to be called the Master Lock by Chris Masters, and that was that. Don't give a shit about anything else. And then we get announced that Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens will be in a match later in the night. Why? I don't know. We go to, straight to Seth Rollins versus Andrade. Last year, from, two, from WrestleMania to about SummerSlam last year, this match would have happened on Monday Night Raw. I would have been, I'm all for it. Give me some Seth Rollins versus Andrade. But the booking of Seth Rollins has kind of just taken away that it's, this guy is just not as good as we thought he was or how good he could be. Seth Rollins can sit there and think that he is the best, and quite honestly, you should do that if you want to be any good at this business. But it just, it just, no. But these guys are having a good match here. It's for the stipulation if Seth Rollins loses, then Andrade takes his spot on the Survivor Series team. Okay, that is fine. If, and only if, you're going to have Seth Rollins lose. But you booked yourself into a corner because you don't want Seth Rollins to lose, you don't want Andrade to lose. So what do you do? We're going to have a SmackDown team invade. We're going to have SmackDown invade. Who are we going to send over? Are we going to send over the Big Dog? Are we going to send over King Corbin or Baron Corbin? Are we going to send over Mustafa Ali, Chad Gable, or anybody else? We send the Lucha House Party. Yes. Kalisto just pops out of nowhere and just shoves Seth Rollins to the floor. They start beating the hell out of him. DQ there. Andrade looks shocked on as Kalisto, Lince Dorado, and Grand Metalik destroy Rollins at ringside. They enter the ring and beat up Andrade. Rollins makes a save from Andrade, threatening to be SmackDown Superstars off for his fans pop. Lucha House Party retreats to the ramp, showing off the blue brand t-shirts that say SmackDown on the front and Fox on the back. So I imagine when we get to SmackDown on Friday, that we're going to see 
Russia is to save USA. So again, you had a a good match here. It wasn't a fantastic match, but it was a good match here between these two. Zelina, get, Zelina Vega did get thrown out of the match early on after she tried to do a Hurricane Rana to Seth Rollins, but he just shoved her off of her. Uh, shoved her off of him. But you have, of all people, and the fact that you had, like, Rudolph or Cesaro and, like, Heavy Machinery and others in this Monday Night Raw show, and you have the Lucha House Party or the first ones to send to... to Go out there to fire the first shot of the night for SmackDown as NXT was the um, horsewoman. My God, that's awful. So Big Joseph says Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins were injured and unable to ta- unable to participate in the title match with the Viking Raiders later in the night. We see Buddy Murphy walking backstage as he stops at the door that says Alice the Black. He and he says he's here to pick a fight with Alice the Black. Nothing happens. He says. Just like I thought, I'll talk. He leaves, and just as he gets out of camera view, we pan back, and Alistair Black comes out, looking for who hit, who knocked on the door. Nothing. We see a bunch of black SUVs pulling up in the back. Triple H steps out of the front one, and we know that the NXT contingent is here. Back and break, we see the CM Punk debut thing backstage from last week. We see this about two times tonight. We get it. He's on Fox's FS1 show for WWE. You don't have to keep shoving it down our throats. If they don't have at least two to 300,000 people watching that last tomorrow night, then having CM Punk come in is not going to be the ratings draw everybody thinks he is. Akira Tozawa versus Bunny Murphy. This was a pretty decent match here. There was a one of the best spots I wish would have been the end of this match, but Akira Tozawa has his... Move his um, jumping senton to the back or on the ropes. But, and what, what he did in this match was you had Buddy Murphy who was on the bottom rope just hanging there. I think it was the bottom of the middle rope. But he was just like, hanging there. So it's Kira Tazawa goes up top, does the back senton splash onto Buddy Murphy who's laying on the ropes. Hits it, gets only a two count. That would have been a fantastic way to end this match, but Buddy Murphy does end up hitting a, I believe, a running knee kit, a running knee to Tozawa, hits the Murphy's Law, one, two, three, and Buddy Murphy picks up a pretty solid win against Akira Tozawa, who I honestly forgot was even employed by WWE because this is, since the draft, this is the first time I believe Akira Tozawa has been on Monday Night Raw. Go backstage and we see Eric Rowan who's talking to what appears to be a live living object that stays in a mysterious carrying cage. Do you care? No. Do I care? Hell no. Eric Rowan versus Alex Malcolm. We go to the ring and out comes Eric Rowan, enhancement talent. Now, a thing about the enhancement talent was, and I've seen people mentioning this, um, was WWE making fun of Will Ospreay because this dude was wearing wrestling gear that was very reminiscent of the Aerial Assassins. I don't know if they were like, Hey, look, this guy looks like Will Ospreay. We'll have, we'll have Strowman squash him. Oh, not Strowman, but Eric Rowan squash him. Another thing. Eric Rowan is an established talent who has been on the main roster for about seven years. And you're having him do squash... Okay, not seven years, but like, 11, like eight, nine years. And you're having this dude go out here and do squash matches on unnamed talent. It's not like Eric Rowan's got a new gimmick. He, or like a new name and he had to re-debut. It's still Eric Rowan and you're having the guy come out here and beat up on... This guy was a tag team champion less than five, six months ago. And now he's over here squashing bums. What gives? God damn, this is terrible. We got some more 24-7 crap doing this. The Singh brothers were running around main side. R-Truth chased them down. The bell rings and Rowan do enhancement talent out there launching over the top to the Singh brothers and yada yada yada. Iron Claw, one, two, three, nothing else I can say about that. Charlie is backstage with Randy Orton. She asks him about the Team Raw members getting along for just one night to win the Survivor Series. Orton says he only has a history of playing well with others only if it benefits him. He says he is the greatest Survivor Series superstar of all time and the stats do back that up. Orton says if the Viking Raiders won a fight tonight, then he will be waiting in the ring with a partner of his choosing, one that will benefit him. Yes, it was mentioned later in the night that Randy Orton has the most, he's on, been on the most winning teams 
has been the most the lone the, the, the lone survivor the most times and uh, has the most eliminations in Survivor Series history. So yes, him being the greatest Survivor Series superstar of all time, that is true. Kevin Owens versus Drew McIntyre. This match was fantastic until the end. So these guys around here having an awesome match. You have stunners being kicked out of, uh, future shocks getting kicked out of. I do like when the Claymore kick was hit and Drew McIntyre went for the pin. You got you got his um, you got Kevin Owens' leg on the ropes. But these guys are having a fantastic match. You get one last stunner when Triple H comes out. Triple H use the kits, we go to commercial break. The referee is gone, Drew McIntyre is gone, it's just Triple H, Kevin Owens in the ring, the Forgotten Sons, Damian Priest, and Dominic Dajakovic are outside the ring. Pretty much the same thing that he did with Seth Rollins, he wants to recruit Kevin Owens to come back to NXT, saying that the Raw superstars don't care about him, the SmackDown superstars never cared about him, Angle and, a- Angle and Shane McMahon have both fired him at, at one time in his career. Nobody has given a damn about Kevin Owens like Triple H and NXT has. He says the reason nobody has come out here to stop to come help you is because they don't give a damn about you, Kevin. All of a sudden, I believe it's the Street Profits and others have come out to brawl with the guys standing outside. While that happens, the Undisputed Era comes out and starts beating the hell out of Kevin Owens. So... We had ourselves a nice little brawl there. The OC come out. Other Raw members come out. Sending the NXT to um, the NXT that group out of the way. And that was it for that part. Backstage, Humberto Carrillo and Charlie Caruso. She announces Humberto versus the United States champion um, AJ Styles next week. She says it's to Paul Heyman, who is breaking news as well. Heyman talks about the recent happenings... Between champion Brock Lesnar and Rey Mysterio and Cain Velasquez, we got regard- recent attacks from Mary to Lesnar. Heyman says the Beast will be 100% this Sunday and was not hurt in just the show that Rey vs. Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series will now be a no holds barred match. Of course it will be. Heyman says, we will see either Rey pull off a miracle or an adventurous family or we will see Lesnar destroy Rey in such a brutal manner that the footage will have to be removed from the WWE archives. Heyman says this won't be a five second match, it will be a public torture session, it will be a massacre, and that's not a prediction, it's a spoiler. So we go back to Charlie who's with right now, he calls Humberto Carrillo who was still in the um, vicinity over and congratulates him on his success and how he's representing Hispanics and tells him to keep it going. They embrace, Humberto walks off after he talks to him in Spanish a little bit, and then he talks to him and says that Brock Lesnar pretty much brought this on me. I didn't come after you, Brock. You came after me. It's a good thing this is a no holds barred now because my little friend, the lead pipe that I have in my hand, he didn't say that, but the lead pipe he has is going to be with him on Sunday. And look, Brock, let me ask you something. Do you think the no hold barred stipulation is an advantage for Brock? He says that the old way would have been demanding an apology, but he's not coming to survive a series for an apology. He's coming for the WWE title. And he dedicates the match to his son. So I don't know how this is going to go. Will Cain Velasquez get involved? I don't want to see Dominic get involved because I don't think he's there yet that they want to do anything like that. But I can honestly see Cain Velasquez possibly getting involved and screwing Brock Lesnar over. But I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. This is definitely going to be interesting because, of course, if you had Brock Lesnar versus Rey Mysterio one-on-one in a normal singles match, then Rey Mysterio stands no chance. Rey Mysterio would be absolutely massacred and would be, be beaten so badly that he would want to take his mask off and be retired and not wrestle again. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens here. But Rey Mysterio is... I don't know what's going to happen with the WWE Championship. I think Rey Mysterio might win it. I don't, I don't have a clue, though. Then we go to Oscar versus Natalia. Why this match was happening... Honestly, the only thing I can think of it was because of what happened two weeks ago when Natalya tapped out Asuka. But, so instead of getting a title match with, with Charlotte like she should have, they gave that to Becky, and Natalya gets a one-on-one match with Asuka. Asuka levels Natalya with a kick to the head. One, two, three, nothing else really special about this match. Natalya needs to retire. It's past her time. She's been in WWE for well over ten years, and she has nothing left to do. She brings nothing to WWE anymore. 
Viking Raiders versus Randy Orton and Ricochet. Of course it was Ricochet. It could not be anybody else. I heard Edge. I heard Morrison. I heard all these other joke things. It's Ricochet. It was going to be Ricochet. So these guys are having a fantastic match here. Randy Orton actually playing nice. These guys are having are doing fucking awesome. We do, for, after the first commercial, when we go to the first commercial break, see Rude, Get Ziggler, and Cesaro beating down, I believe, Eric Young and a couple other um, bums. But these guys are having an awesome match. Oh, it was King. They said Baron Corman. It looked like it was um, Cesaro. It was probably Cesaro. They were attacking Raw Superstars in the back. Cedric Alexander flies to fight, but Rude and Ziggler beat him down. We come back, have ourselves another three, four minutes of a good, of a good match here. Ricochet and Mandy Wood actually working well together. But everybody is down, and out comes Heavy Machinery, Cesaro, Lucha House Party, Baron Corbin, Bobby Roode, Dolph Ziggler, and the others. The referees call the match. After the battle, SmackDown continues to dominate the red brand. The Raiders pull some superstars out of the ring. The Viking Raiders actually pour into the entire SmackDown group to where it was the Viking Raiders, Randy Orton, and Ricochet standing tall in the ring while the SmackDown superstars were on the outside. So, a small contingent of the NXT stars, the Muscle Chopper, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, Pete Dunne, Cruiserweight Champion, Leo Rush, and several others run down and destroy Team Blue. While Ricochet, Randy Orton, and the, Vi- and the Viking Raiders watch from ringside. And when I mean Randy Orton's watching, he's standing on, he's standing in the ropes and just has his arm over and he's just watching what's going on. Like, the dick that he can be. So, they got them down. And you think, oh, well, that's going to be everything. No, the Unspeed Era come out. You have this, sh- like, every fucking man who's not on the injured reserves in NXT is out here. They brought... Everybody besides a Kushida, a Johnny Gargano, and a fellow Team Dream. Like, everybody else was here. And they just start having a brawl. Other Raw superstars come out with Seth Rollins. The OC come out. Like, it was, like, NXT dominated completely because of that. By the time this was all said and done for a minute, NXT was in the middle of the ring. AJ Styles, for whatever reason, comes in and gets destroyed by Team NXT. Triple H appears on the screen and says... This is just the beginning because in six days we will finish this Survivor Series and prove that NXT is the premium brand. Until then, Wednesday night on NXT, the doors will be wide open as he invites everyone to bring what they want and which brand they f- they're fighting for. The huge tribe brand of Brawl continues and out of the three with a few dozen superstars going at it as Raw goes off the air. I hate that we have to go to the tier 6 brawl every single time. They do it every year. It has been announced that Raw, SmackDown, and NXT will be on Wednesday night as well. On Wednesday night and Friday night as well. So, we I fully expect to see this stuff. But NXT, I wish they would not do it wide open. For the simple fact is we still have war games and we still have a ladder match. And we still have to figure out who is going to be going to be in Team Tommaso Ciampa. I still pick in the Velveteen Dream because it's the only guy on the roster who is not in a match already who is going, who's got beef with the Undisputed Era. Who can go? But that was your Raw review. Raw was not a really good show this week outside of, well, nothing really good. I mean, Rey Mysterio's got some good promo skills going on there. The the matches from Humberto Carrillo and Carl Anderson was pretty good. Andrade and Seth Rollins gave you a good match until that match got stopped. Seth, um, Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre was fucking fantastic until Triple H decided, well, I need to talk, so we're going to end this match. Just, ugh, I, I, like, you, like, like, Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre was the match of the night until it ended, the way it ended, and then it's just like, that was a fantastic match. That could, that, and WWE needs to stop doing this where it's like, here's one fantastic match and here's a bunch of shit around it. If you give like, Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre, who have proven that these guys should be battling over the WWE Championship, not Brock Lesnar and Rey Mysterio, no offense to Rey Mysterio, but we should be seeing these guys go at it for, a cha- for the WWE Championship. Now, even if that match had a good finish and that match went about 25, 30 minutes, that's only 30 minutes of an entire fucking three-hour show. You have to put stuff around it. It's going to make the fucking show great. NXT invading. Cool, I guess. But 
we just had a brawl between NXT and Raw about, what was it, two weeks ago? So just rehashing it and throwing SmackDown in there doesn't make it any better. And now we're going to have to see um, NXT get this blood into them this year, and then SmackDown as well this, this coming Friday. So Friday and Wednesday are just going to be meh, and I'm not looking forward to Friday at all just because I know it's going to be trash. But this is your well review. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Follow me on Twitter at TheFrance Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash TheFrance Club. Go and check out um, the front plays as I'm going to be uploading the New Light version of the Red War campaign, which is going to be my Warlock that I did not, my Warlock character that I brought over in the Destiny one as well. But that is all for now, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, on Wednesday or Thursday for NXT uh, and AEW. Until then, my name is France, and I'll see you guys later.